Um, going back to the uh, Secretary's conversation with Lavrov um, this morning, um, over the last few weeks, or certainly since we were in Munich, um, mm -hmm. uh, the US and Europe and others have said that there had been progress made um, in the ceasefire um, mm -hmm. in eastern Ukraine. Yesterday, you put out that statement um, listing uh, what Russia is, uh, is doing now in eastern Ukraine. Uh, what, what is your assessment as to what changed? Um, you know, what has triggered that increase now and, and um, these, these ceasefire viol violations? Well, I don't know if I have sort of analysis of the Russian thinking on this and, and whether anything's changed. I mean, their, their violations of the ceasefire have been going on for some time. Mm -hmm. I think uh, yesterday we wanted to make very clear uh, when we have additional information to share publicly, because I know people ask a lot of details in this room, particularly about what evidence we have of Russian support. So uh, that's why we wanted to put that out yesterday. So how many, sorry, how many troops do you think are in, uh, Russian troops are in, yes. and you were very clear that, that this, these violations are, they've moved more, you know, air mm -hmm. defense units inside mm -hmm. of Eastern Ukraine. Do you, can you tell us, give us more figures on how many, Units or troops are, are, have been moved in, or, or yeah, it's a tough thing to uh, obtain or verify, uh, mainly because Russia has tactics of deliberately uh, trying to camouflage its involvement in eastern Ukraine. It's really hard to get precise information about the Russian troop numbers specifically, um, but we know there's a substantial Russian presence. Uh, we've laid out again some of the weapons; on, those are a little easier to detect, um, but we know there is a substantial presence there. Hey, today spokesman for the Ministry of Defense, the Russian Ministry of Defense, refuted what you, what you said yesterday about uh, deploying, you know, uh, air defense systems mm -hmm. in eastern Ukraine and so on. So you, you, you stand by what you Absolutely. said yesterday. Absolutely. Okay, they're also accusing the United States I think of, President Putin also said there were no Russians fighting in eastern Ukraine. Well, th today's so statement the statements aren't always, uh, you know, equal. rated true by PolitiFact. Well, Kushenko, well, they, they, PolitiFact. Do you not know what PolitiFact is? Yeah, but why would they be talking? I, it was. I, I think President Putin said there were no Russian soldiers. Right. Russians fighting. fighting right. Oh, Russian, Russian soldiers. soldiers. Right. Also not true. Go In ahead. The same yeah. press uh, briefing, uh, Kushenko said that the Americans were actually sending advisors to Eastern Ukraine, military advisors. So, uh, well, do, you, do you deny that? Or? I've been very clear about this, and we have said, we have been transparent about our trainers. They are close to the Polish border in western Ukraine. He should familiarize himself with eastern Ukraine. At Ukraine's invitation, our soldiers are training Ukraine's National Guard. We've done this, I think I said, for about 20 years now, and this is really a ridiculous attempt uh, by the Russians to ship focus away from what's actually happening in eastern Ukraine far away from where we're actually training the Ukrainian National Guard. So uh, the United States does not have any military advisors in eastern Ukraine? I have been very clear there in western Ukraine. So well, the, uh, the, the Russians actually went slightly further and said it was the Americans who were, in fact, violating the terms of the Minsk Accord. What would be your reaction to that? Well, that's just patently ridiculous. The Minsk agreements uh, outline steps the Russians need to take, period, and they're not taking them. The Ukrainians are making progress in implementing their Minsk commitments. I don't remember that we signed up for Minsk commitments. It's the Russians who did and aren't abiding by them. Given what's going on now, I mean, is there any attempt now to try to bring the sides together? I think there is a European-Ukraine uh, meeting coming up later this month, but is there any further diplomatic attempts? Uh, I haven't heard of anything specific. Very no, you said, said, you said the Russian foreign minister will be in the Arctic Council meeting. I don't believe he will be. Uh, you said um, that it's hard to tell exactly how many exact were, numbers, because right. the Russians are so good at camouflaging, well, or they, they, they're, they take maybe they're not very good at camouflaging too. because you seem to think that you, you say that they're yeah. there. What do they, how, how, how do they camouflage the stuff? And if they are well, good at it. in terms of their actual it, soldiers, try to make them look like they're not official Russian soldiers. There's a variety of ways of doing that. Oh. Oh, you mean by putting them in uniform, uh, oh, not outside in, of right. uniform? But then how do you know that, that, that they are? Right, well, we have a variety of ways of knowing who's there and what they're doing that. I'm and, not going to get into more details than uh, that. Okay, can you talk about a little bit about how it is, that, other than the changing of uniforms, that, they, I that they're camouflaged? If, I can see if there's more details on that. What else? Yeah. Anything else on Ukraine? Okay, go ahead, Kim. Yeah. From the senior State Department official that speaks of the phone call between mm -hmm. Kerry and Lavrov, mentioned that um, the secretary 
raised a number of points, including removing all Russian forces from eastern Ukraine. Correct. What was um, Russia's reaction to that? I'm happy to let the Russians read out their reaction to things. I'm probably not going to characterize how they respond. The foreign ministry has some response on its website, but it doesn't mention anything specific to this. Okay, well, I'm happy for you to ask them. I'm just not going to characterize what their response was. Can you characterize the tone of the con conversation? I'm before? probably not going to characterize more than I already did. Uh, you know they speak frequently. Uh, they meet frequently when they're in the same place. I'm probably just not going to characterize it further. Yes. Sure. The, in the state